Hey guys, it's Sophia. I know it's been a very, very long while since I last posted, but as you might have guessed, I was very busy with the last two years of high school and preparing for my final exams. So the program that I followed was the IB program, which is the last two years of high school. And so I was preparing for my exams for two years technically. And so everything just got very, very busy. However, now that I'm finally done with it, I decided to film a video, basically inform people, hopefully are aware of what the IB is and maybe just give you guys some insights uh, and tips and resources if you're planning on taking the same classes as me or just generally need to know some certain things about the IB and possibly how challenging it is. But just so you know, it's a very personal thing. So if I find it very challenging to others that may not seem challenging, it really comes down to how much effort and time you're putting into your subject and the, of course, what is your goal? So how many points do you wanna gain from the IB? So what score do you wanna get in your final exams? This video is just gonna be basically listing down my six subjects and just explaining to you guys how I studied for them and what was the best way that suited me uh, to prepare for my final exams. So my six subjects were, I'm gonna start off with my higher level classes. They were English literature, higher level, um, Spanish B, higher level, and psychology, higher level. And my standard level classes were maths analysis and interpretation standard level, biology standard level, and Greek self-taught standard level. So I doubled up on my language A literature class rather than doubling up on my individuals and societies. So like, I don't know, having psychology and business. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna directly start and hopefully this video does not take too long. I hope I just inform you guys as quickly as possible so I don't take too much of your time. So I'm gonna start off with my standard level classes and go from like easy to hard. And so I'm gonna start off with biology. The number one mistake that I really did make and I shouldn't have, and I don't know how many others actually did the same as me, but the syllabus from biology and from every single subject is given to you for a reason. Do not just ignore it. So I did not look at my syllabus till uh, I had till I started reviewing for my exams and that was the biggest mistake because the biology syllabus is the thing that actually can guide you in preparing for your exams it tells you all the topics that you need to know and it literally exactly tells you what the examiners will be looking for so number one please look at your syllabus always look at your syllabus and refer to that when you're taking your notes now moving on to when it comes to taking your notes from the syllabus because the syllabus is given to you as in like topics basically so it'll be like chapter one cell biology or something and then it'll be like so the cell theory is composed of this 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 so it tells you and then you kind of maybe need to know a couple more details with regards to the notes i used a website because it automatically goes by topic 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 and gives you all the insight that you need to know per topic that website is called biologyforlife.com and what it does is it breaks down each chapter and it directly links to the syllabus. Since the syllabus has changed for the upcoming exams for next year basically in 2025, it also started covering the new syllabus and so it has uh, the chapters and it basically directly links to the syllabus. And so it gives you all the details you need per topic in the syllabus. Uh, another bonus that comes with that is that it doesn't just like list the topics and gives you details. It comes with the Quizlet flashcards. To some, it does not help. I didn't use that feature specifically like the Quizlet flashcards. I just went through Quizlet and I just took the notes. So from per topic, I just went down and I would see this topic is broken down into this many details and I would write down the details that I had to know from that topic. But please make sure with biology not to just overly write stuff that is unnecessary. And I know that is a very vague thing to say because you as a student, how are you supposed to know what is considered important to the examiners and what is not? You will kind of understand it because if you simultaneously try to find various resources, you will kind of see what details one includes and what details the other lacks. And then you can kind of figure out, okay, you don't need to know this or you don't need to know that. For example, um, I was given a biology book. Uh, I think it was like a Pearson's. That book was okay, but it had some things that I didn't have to know or it lacked some details that I was supposed to know. And so that became very confusing to me as a student because I was trying to figure out what is the best way to take notes. And so what I did, is I found another Oxford biology book online which covered exactly the same things, like exactly the same topics that are covered in the syllabus. And so what I mean by that is that you will see the topic in the book and then it will give you the details. Basically like the website. I hope that is clear. If you guys don't understand, please let me know down below and I will completely explain that. Moving on with biology, another tip that I found was very helpful after I finished taking my notes 
was, or simultaneously while I'm taking my notes, is looking at YouTube videos for uh, basically practice and comprehension. Plus it is able to help you enhance your note taking. Alex Lee is very good. He covers various aspects. And I think he's also kind of well known uh, because he also does data-based questions and he shows you what you need to know and what you don't need to know and how should you approach a question. He doesn't cover every single topic or chapter, but he covers certain things. Another YouTuber is Cheryl Hickman. That's how I started off taking notes in biology. Her videos are very long. However, she manages to cover a lot of aspects and she's a very humorous person. And so it's kind of entertaining to watch at the same time. So it's not boring. Her videos are long. And when I mean long, it could be like an hour video per a subtopic. Topic. Imagine you have a chapter and it has like five subtopics. So what you're gonna spend like five hours simply covering one chapter. It's a bit insane, but they do help. So what I would do is do not wait to look at the videos last minute right before your exams because you know you won't have that much time. Adding on to that, Stephanie Graham, Graham, I will link all of them below and I will include any extra details or hopefully if I forget anything, I will write it down below in the description. But Stephanie Graham also, I found her like literally last minute, maybe like four days before my exams. And she, covers everything like Cheryl Hickman, but what she does differently, I think. She has a whiteboard. And so it is basically like she's teaching you in class, like real time. And so she will be writing down and color coding everything on her whiteboard. And she explains everything. She draws the diagrams. I think that's very good. It's very handy. However, her videos are even longer than Cheryl Hickman's. And so what I had done is I sped up her videos, but remember before going in the videos, I had already a solid understanding of the topics. And so maybe going in the videos, you guys might be a bit stressed um, because it might be like an overload and you might feel overwhelmed with all the topics that will be covered and that are being covered by them. Um, so yeah, that's just like a warning. Although you can completely start with their videos without knowing anything beforehand. Moving on, there is the last YouTuber that I had found, Stephanie Castle. Her videos are very good as well, but the bonus that she has is she covers, she started the new syllabus, so that's a very good thing for you guys. Um, so she started the new syllabus and she covers all the topics and she creates very short videos. And what I mean by short videos, I mean like a minute videos three minute videos and she explains like certain concepts that you have to know, which is very, very handy because like me, if you did not find these YouTubers beforehand, then you are like cramming everything up like a week before your exams. And so that's what I had done. And I had looked at, for example, because I was struggling with a chapter two, which for me is molecular biology. And so I was struggling with what diagrams do I have to know, like carbohydrates, monosaccharides, um, polypeptides, etc. And so I went into one of her videos and she explained how I'm supposed to draw it and how to remember certain stuff. So I think it, it's, she's very handy in explaining literally all the topics in a very short time because we don't got time to waste. The last thing to end off the biology part is past papers. And these websites that I will talk about right now can also be used for the rest of the subjects that I will be mentioning. So the core one that I remember and I used for all my subjects was dl.ibdocs.re. That website contains past papers from over, I don't know, 10 years. So it could even start from like 2010 up till now, 2020. Three, and I think they're probably gonna update and have past the papers from 2024. And so it's very good because it comes with tons of past paper, paper one, paper two, and paper three for all the subjects. If the subjects of course has paper threes because some subjects have paper one and paper twos only. For biology, that's where I got all my past papers from because I would get paper ones and paper twos and paper threes. And so I would break it down where each day I would do maybe like two past papers or two paper ones and two more or two paper twos. And what is really good about that is not only that do you get to practice, but you also get to look at the mark scheme and specifically see what the examiners want you to know. So the mark scheme really does help it to further um, add in extra information in your notes. And it's just really handy because you might be writing a lot in paper twos and paper threes and then come to realize through the mark scheme that you do not have to be writing pages like paragraphs. You can just be writing bullet points of everything. And another... Um, resource that I could say for past papers kind of and for practice as well is Revision Village. However, be cautious that because I had bought Revision Village for biology, I had asked my tutor because some questions that I, were get, that I was getting were very hard. And when I mean I was prepared, I was prepared. I had covered all the, the chapters and I was just looking at questions and I wasn't able to answer them. And I started getting worried and I started second doubting myself. And I was like, 
have I missed out on like everything that I'm supposed to know? Like, is this is very crucial. Did I not learn this? Some things that it covers are too advanced. Not even standard level uh, biology students are supposed to know. And so just be careful. It is good practice, but some questions you as a standard level student in biology are not supposed to know. So just keep that in mind. Moving on to maths. Maths was one of my, it was like a love-hate relationship with math because I really am, I was a very, I'm not gonna say bad student in math. I just, I never really liked math. And so I was never able to comprehend it and grasp like the concepts in my head, right? And so I found it very challenging and it was like a roller coaster ride for me. But what I was struggling the most is finding a way to study for math because everyone's like, okay, let's take notes and then I don't know, do exercises. For me, taking notes, that's how I started and then it ended up not really helping me. And so what I did because I was going crazy is I had started early. I did not leave this to last minute because I knew math was one of my weakest subjects. I started after my first year in the IB. I, besides like doing exercises from the books and participating in class, I bought Revision Village and that was the best purchase of my life because it really, really didn't help prepare me for my exams in math. Revision Village is the life savior because what it does is it covers concepts and theories and it, it walks you through how to answer the questions. So it is very handy because it does break down from like easy, medium and hard and it covers each chapter. The, the best thing about it that I really liked is that it had videos per question. So it would have one question which could be like A, B, C, D, E and it would explain each question in a video so it would be like okay a is worth two marks okay and then you can click on the video and you can see what two things that like how did the person actually do it and how did they gain those two marks because remember the marks that you see are specifically designated to the amount of things that you have to include in your answer or have to be seen by the examiner and so revision village is the number one thing that i found really helpful for maths um, as well as sometimes, which was really rare, Khan Academy is not IB, remember that, but I did look at it for like certain general concepts like probability sometimes, because probability is was the one of the hardest chapters and topics for me. And so I looked at Khan Academy to get an overall understanding of what probability is and maybe some examples of it. And a person that I found like quite recently, not right before my exams, but a couple months before was this youtube channel and it's called osc so this guy does a lot of videos uh pretty good videos actually that have that cover each topic and all the concepts of it because revision village does come with overall videos besides like the videos that come with the questions overall videos that cover widely concepts like they could just mention trigonometry and they're gonna just explain overall facts about trigonometry this guy went in more detail about those concepts. So he would cover big chapters, split it up, and cover all the little concepts that you have to know. So basically, it's like a free Revision Village. It's like a free version of Revision Village on YouTube. Revision Village does have videos uh, on YouTube, but as I mentioned before, they're shorter and they don't go in as much depth as this guy does. So if you guys wanna just have a look at it, with me, it helped me a lot because it covered, as I mentioned before, all the little topics. Um, and it's just better have multiple resources than solely depend on one. And that's what I did. And then of course, last tip for math is practice, 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 past papers, use the website that I mentioned before, dl.ibdocs.re. What I did is a week before my math exam, I did two past papers per day. So I did a paper one in the morning and a paper two in the afternoon. And it really does help because again, again looking at the mark scheme, does help you see what the examiners are aiming for and what they want to see in your work. You guys will feel much more ready if you've practiced a lot of past papers rather than only practicing like two and then going in the exam because you're going to be less stressed because you're going to know that you've done all that you could have done and there's nothing more you could do besides that. So it's like you've given it your all. Moving on from maths, there's like a very low chance that whoever is watching this will do Greek self-taught literature. However, I'm just gonna mention briefly the resources that I used. So the pr first thing is I had a tutor, obviously because it's self-taught. So she gave me all the material that I had to look at. Um, the second thing though, that was a very huge struggle was finding past papers for Greek. Finding past papers for, for Greek literature was impossible because the syllabus changed in 2019 meaning and uh, that i couldn't find any past papers only like one past paper and so i was not able to gain as much practice i did practice with the past papers from before 2019 however 
Once again, they were structured differently, so they were composed of two questions rather than one question. So I did not expect that I was gonna have an issue with finding past papers because I, at the end of the day, that's all I was looking forward to, doing past papers and just feeling like I'm getting somewhere. Uh, and I did do the past papers, the ones that I had access to, which were like two, one to two. Um, and then I did practice with the ones before uh, 2019. However, as I mentioned before, it was a huge struggle because I couldn't find a lot of past papers and there are not a lot of advice online or resources because this is a very rare subject that people take nowadays. And another thing, which is also gonna apply for English literature because they are the same, it's just a different language and different levels. I would say as a literature student, memorize key literary devices and key literary techniques. And what I mean by memorize, I don't mean that, okay, memorize like five and then that's it. What I mean by memorizing and kind of getting accustomed to is having like seven, let's say, literary techniques and devices in mind that you know, like, fully you know the effect on the reader you know how to describe it you know how to explain it and of course you know how to locate it because there's a chance that some of those techniques and devices will not be in the given extract that you get however it's better to go in uh, having like a solid knowledge of seven literary techniques and devices than going in knowing like a bit of everything because there's a high chance that at least one out of the seven devices and techniques that you've learned will be like you will be able to locate it in the extract. So that's what I had done. I had like not memorized. I was just more accustomed to like knowing like a couple, for example, like repetition, what it does, the effect on the reader, um, you know, similes, oxymorons, um, personification, you know, like a couple of those. So I had gone in like ready and I just knew the things that I was gonna use in a way. However, do not learn techniques and devices that are too, too specific. Like, I don't know, in poems, anaphora or memorizing like a specific rhyme type, stuff like that. I feel like that is too specific and the more specific stuff you memorize, the less likely they're gonna be in there, if that makes sense. So just try and have like a broader understanding of the most commonly used literary techniques and devices. And hopefully you will be okay because that's what I had done. Um, for Greek, uh, as I mentioned before, those were a couple of the stuff that I had memorized. Memorized as in understood and practiced and used most often in the practice past papers that I had done with my tutor. And so, yeah. Moving on now to my higher level classes, which are English literature. Uh, since English literature, as I mentioned before, again, is very similar to Greek, I'm just gonna be very quick and brief with it. Uh, I was a higher level student for English literature, yeah. Uh, very hard decision because it's literature, it's not language and literature. And this is where it leads me into this other aspect that I feel like some people are confusing. Everyone keeps using the IB English guys and everybody keeps recommending the IB English guys. The IB English guys are language and literature. They are not solely literature teachers. And so what they have in mind is what the examiners for that will be grading the IB and language literature exams uh, are looking for. So the tips that they do give probably of course do apply in literature because it's language and literature. Obviously it's gonna cover literature. And so they do give advice and tips for literature. Um, and poetry and proses and etc and stuff that they use like that however it's not to the same depth uh, that a literature student should know of I hope that makes some sense because as a literature student it's not I feel like literature solely literature alone is much harder than language and literature and so it's much more stricter and much more demanding, I'd say, like having a poem and a prose that you have to analyze. And another issue that I had also was there aren't as many past papers for uh, English A higher level literature compared to English language and literature higher level, which was very annoying, but I did find more than I had found for Greek, so that's great, but there was like some shortage on those. Um, I'd also recommend, uh, of course, doing the past papers from the website that I mentioned before um, because it does come with past papers for everything, like I said. And uh, if I remember correctly, I had looked at a couple of YouTube videos um, because there are some people that describe how you should structure your analyses and how you should go about them with your whole introduction, thesis statement, your body paragraphs, like the structure, how you should organize it. And also with that, make sure to have in mind the criteria 
my teachers have been telling me that my tutors have been telling me that always have like in mind when writing something what the examiners are looking for so like criteria a b c d it is very important and that's where they like marking you off so there are like certain terms that they like to see you use there are some sentences that they want to see some words that they love seeing uh and yeah so have that in mind now moving on to spanish oh this is gonna be a great time okay i do Sp i did oh wow well, it's in the past i did spanish higher level and that was the most exciting time of my life however it was a huge struggle as well because higher level spanish means your level is b2c1 well here's the t i was not b2c1 i was only b1 going to b2 and not even honestly uh, however, what really did motivate me uh, to really, really study for Spanish and just hopefully do well, which we'll see in the summer with the results, was I love the language. And so I had, that was my main motivation. I love the language and I really wanted to pursue it later on in the future, hopefully learn it even more and further my education with Spanish. And so that was the huge motivator. Uh, and so I was doing Spanish alone at home. I had a tutor who helped me prepare for my exams, my paper one, my paper two, my oral exam as well. And so I'm very thankful to her for that. And with regards to paper one is the written expression. Uh, so that's where you need to know all the different text types. Um, like there's like four common ones and there's like a couple extra ones. So I think knowing the four common ones is all you actually genuinely need. It's just practice, practice, practice. You just need to be able to write and write and write. And of course, time yourself. With paper two, which is the reading and the listening, within the reading part, the text types from what I've seen, because that's how it was in the exam. And that's how I had, that's how I had seen and noticed that my past papers were like, they had um three texts obviously and they started off easy and the last text was the hardest so it would be like easy medium hard and so what i had done is i of course i had even thought of maybe starting with the hardest one and going to the easiest one but i feel like better start off with the easier one and maybe gain some points from there than go directly to the hard one and like lose all my marks and not have enough time to finish the easier ones and so i started off uh with the first text type and what I would do, which I think is sometimes a common sense, I think a lot of people do it, but I don't know, I just thought I'd say it, is instead of just reading the text, because you get, get, have five minutes, instead of just reading the text, I would immediately start with reading the first question um, and directly then going to the text so that when I read it, at least I have the question in mind and so I'm looking for the answer directly. And so that's what I would do. I would look at like one, two, three, uh, the first three questions, and I would directly read the text However, having uh, in mind the questions. And so right when the five minutes were up, I would immediately start writing because I knew where the answers were. And so that saves you a lot of time. The reading also includes a lot of vocabulary that you have to know. And so that is, that was a huge struggle for me because sometimes they also ask for synonyms or expressions or you having to locate synonyms in the text or just finding, they give you a word and you have to find the synonym or have to know it off by heart, uh, some expressions, etc. The only way you can really prepare for that is just doing a lot of past papers and just practicing with a lot of vocabulary and just reading stuff outside of school. So what I mean is like reading a book. Um, I know everybody says that with languages, but at the end of the day, a language, you cannot learn it like a day before the exam. You just, it's like a thing that needs a lot of time. It's like, you know, steady growth. So you cannot just cram it up in a week. It's not like material for maths or biology, etc. It needs its time. And so just doing past papers with reading comprehensions is really helpful. Um, uh, and now with listening, um, listening is just, you just have to get your ears used to different accents. And so what I did is, because I of course loved Spanish and I still do this in my free time, is I love listening to Spanish songs, Spanish music. And so whenever I'd hear something or that I would understand in the lyrics, I would look it up. Um, as well as I would listen to podcasts or even watch series. Um, and so that's how I kind of got my ears used to different accents in Spanish. And that's literally all you can do for listening is just practice with different resources, you know, resources as in podcasts, series, and music. And so, yeah, that's basically it for Spanish. Uh, it really comes down to if you were, if you are like me and are thinking of taking Spanish higher level, I'd say if your level is not where it's supposed to be, you really need to have like a strong motivator or else you're going to get burnt out midway. Um, and so, yeah, that's what drove my passion because I was really passionate in learning Spanish. And so that's what just really kept me going. Uh, and hopefully it shows in my results. 
Um, and so, yeah. Moving on now with the last subject for my higher level classes is psychology. Psychology was and has always been one of my favorite subjects, but um, a very, very hard one. All the subjects are equally as hard. However, they each come with their own strengths and weaknesses. So with psychology, okay. I prepared it differently, I'd say for each paper. So we have three papers in psychology. Paper one is all about the short answer questions and the uh, extended essay question. Like the way that I prepared for it and I think that's the common thing that everybody also did was you have to go through each approach and look at the questions because the questions are available to all of us. Uh, they're out there, but there's so many that it's impossible to just ace your exams. So I hope nobody's thinking that, oh, psychology students get all their answers online. And so they're just gonna like get an easy seven because that's not the case. We have like, I don't know, like 50 questions per approach and there's no way you can memorize that. And that's only one approach and we have like three, so. Yeah. Um, and so what I would say is go through the questions and pick studies that you can use for them. Duh, obviously. However, what I mean by that is also trying to see if you can use those studies and double up within other approaches as well, if that's possible, which to me, it hasn't happened. I wasn't able to do that as well as doubling up within that same approach. So let's say I want to find a study for techniques used to study the brain in relation to behavior uh, and find something as well that connects to neuroplasticity. Well, I had picked, for example, Lubiatal. And so that fills up like a lot of questions because there's a lot of questions structured differently, but talk about the same thing. And so I would use one key study for like, I don't know, three to four questions. And that's amazing. That's, that's brilliant. And so just doubling up with your key studies is very helpful. And that means you won't have to know as many. A mistake that I had made in my mock exams, uh, which really honestly traumatized me. And so from there, I learned that I have to really pay attention to is the command terms. Please pay attention to command terms, because if you do not follow the command terms and do what they tell you, your marks will just go like that, even if you explain perfectly like the studies and everything was structured great. So you really, really, really need to pay uh, attention to the command terms uh, with like words such as like evaluate or discuss. And so from then on, what I had done is from each study, just in case, because I never knew what like question might come up or how the examiners might like restructure the questions. And so what I had done is I, for each little key study that I knew, I would always remember like a couple, like two to three strengths and weaknesses and maybe some ethical considerations or ethical considerations that, like, that were not like followed. And so I would always have those in mind. And so when I went to my exam and I had my essay question did include, I think the word evaluate, if I remember correctly, I had already known the key studies that I was going to use. And I already knew the little, the little like, um, ethical considerations or little strengths and weaknesses that I use. Also, please keep in mind that sometimes the questions ask about research methods. So they're like evaluate the research method and evaluate the sampling method. I don't think there's a sampling method, but evaluate the research method. So when it says evaluate the research method, you just have to really pay attention to evaluate the research method and not the study overall. And so I feel like this like leads me on to paper two and paper three. Paper three is all about evaluating uh, and being able to read an extract, like a key study and evaluate like the research method, the sampling method, identify it, maybe propose like an additional one or an alternative like research method. Then it talks about, asks you maybe about biases or ethical considerations, um, transferring and like credibility, etc. I feel like if you prepare for paper three, it will really help you be able to even improvise when it comes to evaluating a study or discussing it because preparing for paper three will help you with paper two and paper one if the question consists of evaluation because your brain will have been so wired to just locating like issues with ethical consideration or strengths and limitations, uh, strengths and weaknesses, you know, all that jazz. No, that jazz. Um, with your key studies, please create a template. Create like with all the questions and create all the studies for each approach. With like the biological approach, I'd have the question and then I have the key studies. Then another template, and what I mean by my template is like a Google Sheets. Then another template would be like a cognitive approach, all the questions and all the um, key studies. Uh, remember, don't forget the extensions because there's a chance that they will pop up in your extended essay question. I also, besides that, I also had created a Google Docs uh, with all the questions, uh, but with each key study being detailed. So I'd have the written the question and then I'd be talking about the key study. Like I would be creating introduction, the body and the mini conclusion. And I would do that for each question, even if the question included the same key study. The only thing that I would change would be the mini introduction. So I'd have a different introduction because the question was of course asking a different thing. So I could have used, as I mentioned before, Luby et al for a techniques used to study the brain in relation to behavior and neuroplasticity. However, in those different questions, I had to define different terms in the introduction. 
Um, and of course, include different things in the conclusion as well. And so the key study was the same, but the, the introductions and the conclusions were different. Moreover, paper two depends on the optional chapters that your teacher like does with you. Memorize your key studies as well. Try to limit it to like four key studies per, per sector, if that makes sense. Because as we all know, in psychology, paper two, it's like an optional chapter has like three questions that you will see in your exam. Each question uh, is from like a larger set of questions. And so for example, in abnormal psychology, we had done like the second sector. I think that's what I'm gonna call it, the second sector. And that included various questions. And so I only had prepared for the second question that was gonna pop up in my exam. Uh, and so I had done, uh, so two studies for the prevalence rates of disorders and then two other ones for the explanations for disorders and the etiologies of disorders um, And so yeah, I technically had only four studies that I had memorized uh, However, as I mentioned before usually For paper two they all their questions include evaluate 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 or discuss 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 because they want to see How well you're able to talk about the study not just simply stating it but also demonstrating your ability to um, evaluate it and discuss strengths and weaknesses and limitations and its ethical considerations. Uh, as well as the same for me, we also did the human relationships and so we only did the first part of the questions, the, the first sector and the third sector. We did not do the second one, which is like the group dynamics. And so we've only focused on the first and the third. Some people chose to do the third. I went with the first one and so I only memorized I think again it was four studies but if you think of it it's less studies that you have to memorize for paper two than compare in comparison to paper one paper one you have to memorize like a tons tons and tons of key studies whilst for paper two i only technically had to memorize like eight which is a lot but also not like too much either way besides that another resource rather than creating a google sheets and a google doc with all your studies is i think all psychology students know thematic education and they explain each concept they state the questions they give you some tips and advice on paper one paper twos and paper threes with paper threes i would say uh there is this pdf that i had found online and i will link it down below this pdf that explains what each, each research method is each sampling method is that you have to know for your paper three because in paper three it all comes down to you being able to memorize what each sampling research method uh, biases that exist um credibility transferability replicability stuff like that oh generalizability as well it all comes down to you being able to understand and remember what the, that is but also being to, able to apply it once you see the given study uh and having to evaluate it basically um and so thematic education does cover a bit of paper three gives you like an example and yeah I think that's it. I hope it's not very messy with the whole psychology, but psychology was just a bit of a struggle. I was not really able to see how I'm supposed to like, you know, study for psychology because everyone will be like, okay, just sit down and memorize the studies. Yeah, it's not just that. I wish it was that. It's like not as easy because it's not like you only have to memorize like five things. It's you have to memorize like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of studies. And so uh, the last thing that helped me i think prepare for psychology was creating flashcards um some people prefer digital ones i started off with digital but then i ended up doing physical ones and so i had created like a stack of cards uh in which i would write down the question so i'd be like okay neuroplasticity or evaluate neuroplasticity explain neuroplasticity blah 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 and then on the other side it would be the key study and some bullet points of the stuff that i'd have to remember you can even create acronyms from studies like remembering certain conclusions i don't know and yeah basically trying to find some shortcuts for yourself will really help you in the long run that's basically it for my studies i hope i did not miss out on any of the studies oh and do not forget to practice oh yo i forgot there's a <laughs> there is a youtube channel look up uh youtube videos online because there are some youtube videos that do talk about uh, paper three and they even show you how you're supposed supposed to do a paper three and because the questions are also as <laughs> because the questions are known beforehand but they vary uh, and so some videos do explain how you're supposed to approach the study and answer the question so yes please keep that in mind and command terms command terms but besides that I think that's that's literally all I have to say about my subjects just keep in mind that the tips and resources that I gave are what suited me and what helped me prepare for my exams. So there, it's a, there's a high chance that the way you study will completely vary from the way that I study. Um, but I hope these tips come in handy because I feel like I came to the realization that I found these uh, stuff very late, like some websites. 
although I could have found them earlier. And so if this video reaches you, please start as quick as you can and do not leave it to last minute. And yeah, I hope these advice uh, and resources kind of helped you. Um, and hopefully I will see you guys soon with another video. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for staying so long throughout the whole video. Um, Thank you for your patience because I know this video turned out to be much longer than it's supposed to, but I just wanted to go into full depth about each of my subjects and hopefully it helped you guys uh, with new resources now and comment down below anything, any questions you guys might have, etc. I will get back to you as soon as possible and I will see you guys soon with a new video. Bye!